Some of you guys emailed me wanting to know if I've seen Dinesh D'Souza's latest film, 2000 Mules, and what I thought about it. Well, I have seen it, and my thoughts are, we're screwed. This documentary film makes a compelling case that enough votes were illegally trafficked that it changed the outcome of the 2020 election. The claim in the movie is that hundreds of thousands of votes were illegally trafficked from nonprofit groups that pose as being nonpartisan when in fact they were working to elect Joe Biden. The film says that thousands of people, or mules, took tens of thousands of votes from nonprofit organizations and illegally deposited them into ballot drop boxes, many of whom did it in the middle of the night when there weren't any witnesses. Dinesh features a group called True the Vote that bought millions of dollars worth of cell phone data from around the time of the election in some of the swing states. With this data, through what's called geolocation, they were able to figure out that there were more than 2,000 people that visited at least five nonprofit organizations and 10 different drop boxes leading up to the 2020 presidential election. For those of us who have a hard time believing that the 2020 election results were fair, it's a very compelling documentary. For those who say that the 2020 election was the most secure in history, they dismiss this documentary as a far-right piece of fiction. And their number one argument against the film is that geolocation isn't that accurate. And I'm no expert in geolocation, but I can do some research. With a simple Google search, which seems a bit like foreshadowing at this point, I found this article from HowToGeek.com. How to find your location history on iPhone or iPad. If you've ever wondered where you were last week, you can use your iPhone or iPad to view your location history. And if you use Google Maps, you can find very detailed information about your whereabouts. All major tech companies and apps have some form of location tracking feature. Everyone from Apple, Google, Facebook to Twitter does it. Each company uses the data in different ways. Apple, for example, only collects a pool of significant locations that you have visited in the past and claims it doesn't share this data with anyone. Google, on the other hand, keeps a detailed track of all your activity, especially if you use Google Maps. And that linked us to this article called, Google's Location History is Still Recording Your Every Move. Google could be tracking and recording your every location on your Android device, and you may not even know it. The culprit is a largely ignored feature in Android called Google Location History. The actual location service isn't unusual. It uses information like cell IDs and Wi-Fi routers to locate and place your device. Other companies such as Apple and Microsoft use similar services for their devices. The existence of Google location history is nothing new. In fact, other sources have reported it previously. But it's still surprising how few people know or realize what it is and how it works. What isn't surprising are the reactions to it which usually range from creepy to scary and a few others between. In 2021 alone, over 25 million Americans downloaded Google Maps. I doubt that very many of them were worried about being tracked by the app. I have it on my phone and assumed it tracked my every whereabouts. But I got nothing to hide. It's not like I'm dropping off dozens of votes to multiple drop boxes in the middle of the night. The Associated Press, like most mainstream outlets, dismissed this documentary straight out of the gate. Here's what they reported about geolocation data and why you can't trust it. Experts say cell phone location data, even at its most advanced, can only reliably track a smartphone within a few meters, not close enough to know whether someone actually dropped off a ballot or just walked or drove nearby. Okay, let's look at one of the examples they use in the documentary. What you see here on the screen is a single person on a single day in Atlanta, Georgia. They went to 28 drop boxes in five organizations in one day. So the experts say that tracking a smartphone can only reliably track it within a few meters. So we can't possibly know if someone actually dropped ballots into the drop box. But what are the chances that a person drove by 28 different drop boxes and five nonprofit organizations for some other reason? And what are the chances that a couple thousand other people did the same thing for something other than ballot trafficking? Now, what we can't know without the opportunity and the ability to do the geolocation work ourselves, is that Dinesh and the organization True the Vote could be lying. We don't have the ability to check their work, but law enforcement does. And I believe that this documentary makes a strong enough case that a criminal investigation should be started. 
However, with what we're seeing from John Durham in the Michael Sussman case, it wouldn't give me much hope if law enforcement agencies got involved. Not only did the FBI quickly figure out that there was nothing to the Russian collusion story, the leadership at the FBI lied to their agents and told them that the information they had gotten from Sussman was from the CIA. And Robbie Mook, Clinton's campaign manager, admitted that Hillary Clinton agreed to leak the information to the media, even though the information originated with Sussman, someone who was on her payroll. And then for three years, the Democrats, the FBI, and the media tried to destroy Donald Trump's presidency with the Russian collusion story, even though they all knew it was untrue. So yeah, like I said at the beginning of this video, with all things considered, my reaction to this documentary is, I think we're screwed. But I wish that wasn't the simple truth. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And if you all want to support this channel, check out the links in the description and let's keep putting some common sense back into the great debate.